Dark Souls Design Works mostly has finalized art designs for the first Dark Souls game. There are also a few development sketches and an interview transcript with some of the artists. Overall, this is a below average video game art book. This review will cover the quality of the physical book itself, the content of the book, the aesthetics, and the nostalgia evoked by the book. I'll also look at whether it provides any insight into the game's development. Let's start with the quality of the physical book. It's 8.5 by 11 and 3 quarter inches. It has 125 pages, but only 110 have art on them. The book itself feels a bit flimsier than average. It comes with a dust jacket that looks similar to the hardcover. The pages with the interview transcript are very thin, but mine haven't ripped. As for the quality of the images, many are just too small. Sinfully too small. I'll talk more about this later. And also, there's some images that are pretty blurry, unfortunately. Overall, the quality of the physical book is below average. All right, let's talk about what's in the book. What types of images are there? The first 30 pages have key art, which are pretty cool and iconic. There are a couple of images that show how some contraptions in the game work. There are a few images that show how a boss was designed, but there isn't much of that. In a few places, there's some writing next to the images that appear to be from the design phase. Though there's a little bit of variety, the vast majority of the images are of the finalized art designs. The book's organized into several different sections. First, there's the key art, then environments, NPCs, bosses, other enemies, armor, weapons and shields, and unused material. It ends with a lengthy interview with the game director, Miyazaki, and some of the artists. The interview's from 2011, soon after the game was released. The quality of the writing is pretty bland. The text says simplistic things like, this is the section with the boss monsters. The interview is transcribed verbatim, so there's not really much here to critically review. All right, does this book have what you want it to have? In general, there just isn't enough art content. Dark Souls has tons of armor and weapons, and loads of creative monsters and environments. And this book doesn't even come close to doing them justice. I mean, this book should be a celebration of the art design, but instead it briefly shows one small image of most monsters and entirely neglects other parts of the game. What a missed opportunity. Allow me to expound upon my complaints with some examples. With all the armor in the game, this book only shows the starting armor. There's just half a page showing Solaire and Sigmire, and there's nothing showing their development. Now I got nothing against the Batwing demons, but why do they get more space than Gravelord, Nido, Pinwheel, and the Moonlight Butterfly combined? There's nothing on the Crystal Cave, nothing on Isoleth. There's one small image of Darkroot Basin. There's nothing on the Great Hollow or Ash Lake. There's no Seaf. It's missing some major things, in my opinion. The interview's nice, but ideally the publishers would have used the information from the interview to organize the book and make remarks all throughout, including putting commentary right next to the images. The interview mentions that Miyazaki regrets the Bed of Chaos boss and that the book publishers have seen a design sketch for King Isolith, who was originally planned to be the final boss of Isolith instead of the Bed of Chaos. Yet there's no image of this. It just seems like an obvious missed opportunity. The interview also says the book contains images of the basilisk and that it would be fun to compare the final draft to the initial sketches. I agree. The problem is they didn't put the development sketches in the book. Overall, the content of the book is below average. Though the key art images are great, most of the book is just finalized concept art without commentary. And it's disappointing how much content simply isn't here. On to the aesthetics. Does it have an artistic, pleasant layout? In general, I would have liked a lot of the images to be bigger. For example, there's a detailed image of how the iron ball mechanism works in Sen's Fortress, but the image is so freaking small you can't even appreciate it. And there are some page layouts that are truly perplexing. For example, on this page there are two shots of Honor Londo, but as near as I can tell the lower image is literally the exact same thing as the one above it, except it's more zoomed in on the entrance. It's like someone noticed the image was worth focusing on and worth pointing out the detail, but couldn't be bothered to find a way to actually show it off properly in the book. Here's an idea. You're the one making the book. Just print the whole image over more space. Like an entire page or two. <laughs> I mean, what were they thinking? Oh yeah, that is pretty cool. Why don't you zoom in on the interest and paste it in there again? On the same page. <laughs> Come on, honestly, what were they thinking? Are there any full pages of art? There's full page key art for the first 30 pages, which are pretty cool. 
I actually think the art itself is very nice to look at. It's good, but it's presented so small. Like on this page, everything here could have been presented so much bigger. Or look at this early concept art for the kiln. Looks like a really cool image, but it's just so small it's hard to appreciate. And in case you think I'm being too hard on this book, look at how some other art books have presented their art. It's not tiny. It's big. It's celebrated. As for other noteworthy aspects of the aesthetics, the hardcover has a cool design, but it almost looks like the border is a sticker. It'd be amazing if it was embossed or debossed instead. Also, there's a map of a lot of the game, and it's awesome. However, it's pretty small and very blurry. It was originally a poster, so I assume there'd be no problem in making it a good quality image that takes up a whole page, if not two. Overall, the aesthetics of the book are poor. Many images are just way too small, and the overall layout uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Alright, does the book evoke nostalgia? Now, I'm a big Dark Souls fan. I platinum Demon Souls before Dark Souls was even announced. So I'm what you might call a Souls hipster. Just about anything would make me nostalgic for Dark Souls, including this book. I do think it could have done more, though. For me, the nostalgia I felt was mostly due to how good Dark Souls is as a game. It wasn't necessarily due to how good this art book is. I mean, who could look at an image of a serpent soldier, mimic, or a titanite demon without feeling some sort of nostalgia? I also think the interview at the end of the book is likely to evoke nostalgia because they discuss the feel of playing the game and the experience of playing the game. All in all, I think this book does as much as any other video game art book to evoke nostalgia. Now on to the part of the review where I'll discuss if the book added any insight into the game. In the interview, Miyazaki talks about how he's vague with his instructions in order to help the designers use their imagination and their own skills. For example, he might tell an artist to design a sword that looks like something you'd entrust your life to and feel close to. I gathered that he wanted to give direction, but he didn't want to constrain the artists. He wanted them to be able to use their own talents. He also recounts the story of how the Gaping Dragon came about, one of my personal favorite bosses. Miyazaki told a designer, Nakamura, to come up with a monster with a, quote, insatiable need. He assumed a person would use his phrase, insatiable need, to just make a fat monster with a big mouth. But he loved what Nakamura came up with, a dragon whose entire emaciated body is just a mouth trying to eat anything. I mean, and what a great design that was. I mean, that's one of my most memorable moments in all of Dark Souls. The interview has a lot of other interesting insights, like how Miyazaki instructed each artist to work on an entire area of the game and everything in it, rather than having them work solely on the weapons or the monsters. I think that's probably why the game feels so cohesive. The interview involves Miyazaki and four other designers. And though Miyazaki is responding to the majority of the questions, you get a sense for the camaraderie between the team and how Miyazaki's approach and personality really seems to have created a work environment where the designers felt valued and that they could be creative. He's reassuring and expresses confidence in them. For example, Miyazaki said he let someone rename Gravelord Nido because the artist was new and Miyazaki wanted him to know that his opinion was valued. I think all this stands in stark contrast to the notion of bunch of executives in a conference room deciding what should be in a game. Well, in closing, there just isn't enough art in this art book, and what is here is often pretty small. It's a shame that the best thing about this art book is probably the written interview. Dark Souls the Game is amazing, but sadly this book uh, is not. Different people want different things in video game art books, but I hope this review has been helpful in showing you what you can expect from this book. As always, if you have any complaints about this video, please contact my customer support center.